Um, so that's it for this year's LSFMM BPF conference. I hope uh, you all had a good time and you had good discussions. As usual, when we conclude, uh, we have a readout of the summary from all the track leads. So I would like to welcome all the track leads to the front. Yeah, everybody to the front from the from the track leads, um, and they can give you a quick summary, five six minutes in terms of what happened, what you concluded, and so on. Um, so let's start with storage. Okay, we had a session on untorn writes slash atomic writes. Um, I think we're pretty close to to uh, having that particular feature ready to merge. We talked about uh, flexible data placement, which is a new way of doing um, write amplification reduction on NVMe. Um, we talked about PI, uh, pass-through improvements uh, for useland apps, and we had a session of, on copy offload, of course. And I think we're actually... <laughs> I think we're actually at the point where we're going to merge copy offload after 10 years. So it's, it's, it's that's, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, and in the other surprising things we're merging, uh, we're going to merge the block layer Rust support. <laughs> then we had a session about uh, replacing uh, BioVex with fires and folios and all the new fangled MM stuff. And it was actually a session that ended up being so productive, we split it in two and kept talking about it. So um, that was super interesting. Uh, we had a session on device probing. And we uh, had, uh, oh my god, what's happening here bug, uh, right on display, where uh, device nodes in slash dev uh, got shuffled, so you did, after you had run a DD on a device, all the devices would get renumbered, and that is bad, so uh, <laughs> we're gonna uh, try and fix that. <clears throat> and then today, we mostly talked about NVMe multipathing, and uh, fun things about, uh, you know, flaky network links and slower links and asymmetric paths and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to... I think the only thing, we had some sessions on CI and testing. Yep. And uh, while we didn't reach, like, you know, there was no discussion, but, um, you know, some new CI coming and maybe offline discussions on whether we should centralize some of the testing over LF. But, um, you know, I guess that's for next year reporting. Okay, start. So yeah, we were also talking about atomic, <laughs> atomic API, uh, atomic rights. Yeah, I guess there were some discussions about the API. I'm not sure we have actually came to a definitive conclusion, but I guess at least we've got better understanding about the various proposals of what people, uh, how the API should look like. Uh, so hopefully we will be able to come to some like decision whether we are going to go with what is currently proposed or not for the API. Uh, yeah, we, we also were speaking about like the NFS change cookie and stuff, which I guess uh, Jeff is go, uh, like going to try again. We, we have some ideas how, how we could fix, fix the problem. It's mostly a question about whether it's going to be performing well enough or not. Uh, we were also talking about file system maintenance, uh, like the tangible re outcome from that is that probably we are going to create like FS next branch, which is merging like the major file system trees together so that everybody can use it as a base for testing. So that, that's, I guess, like one of the tangible outcomes. Uh, Okay, but what else? If you have something more. Um, uh, there was a talk about uh, statics trying to extend, 
define some volume idea. I don't think we have a <laughs> concrete solution uh, there. Uh, a discussion about Mount API uh, work that has been done over year and uh, things that need to be improved, extended, uh, like error reporting and mount notifications. Hopefully, oh, yeah. that, that was... <laughs> nobody to commit it to anything. Uh, but we have, <laughs> so we, have, we have kind of idea what is actually wanted. Yeah, so yeah. that that was a kind of agreement how to do it. It's just not sure who is going to do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. There's there's something for next year's intro to see if we've done anything. Um, uh, what else? Uh, with regard to file system maintenance in general, uh, there was a talk here about one new file system uh, that uh, FAMFS uh, that was asking to join the community. And uh, the discussion was, uh, um, among other things, whether this should be a new file system or it should use a fuse and extend fuse to whatever uh, the requirements are because they might be pretty close and we will see this year how it goes. We need to check this. Um, uh, what else do I have here? Um, okay, um, there was an update about FA Notify, new features for FA Notify, uh, things that are in the works, and some of the, some there are some people here that have been testing some patches, um, ran into uh, some um, issues, complications, and we discussed them. It's hard to get into that, but um, <laughs> it's uh, generally about uh, providing a uh, a hook for uh, page faults uh, to fill file content. There, <laughs> just threw it out there. Um, uh, we had some uh, sessions about file system testing, of course, as always, and backporting um, to stable kernels. Um, n as always, not, not many uh, concrete uh, uh, decisions. We have some um, diversity with uh, test runners, which some of us think is a good thing. Uh, so we have many different test runners and m mainly work about sharing the configurations and test runs, how many test runs and trying to collaborate on that and um, also collaborating on sharing results. This is all something that, that's going to be hopefully uh, a benefit from having the same, to test the same uh, tree, uh, sharing the results on the same tree. Um, yeah, we had some new uh, crazy proposals throw, thrown out. We'll see if anything happens. Uh, we had a proposal for rename temp file, oh, yeah. which is cool, pretty cool. Uh, rename an anonymous file over uh, a named file to replace it. Um, there was a proposal for drop, dropping caches for, for a specific file system, which is... Uh, Challenging. I don't know if we'll, it will happen, but uh, and there was a proposal from Alviro on persistent decache entries, which I cannot elaborate on now. We will see how that goes. Well, yeah, hopefully uh, it was basically our brief task about the work he's doing to clean up, clean up the uh, the handling of the like file system infrastructure for like in memory file systems various like debug FS and, and similar, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. with that I guess we can hand it over to MM. I will likely not go through all the topics that we've had because uh, my brain is burnt and I barely remember what happened yesterday. Uh, but uh, we've had a very productive MM uh, track, I would say, I would dare to say. Uh, we've started with almost uh, half a day without any agenda and we run here with all of them used, so uh, I find that as a sign of success that we meet and we generate topics to talk about and have very good discussions about those. Just by topics, we were discussing memory tiering, had a very good discussion on that. 
we have made some action plan to clean up huge DLBFS, which, don't, uh, which is a major pain for uh, maintenance and future features addition. Um, we've had quite some discussions about uh, large pages and how to deal with making them more reliable to allocate. And uh, yeah, we have very modest CXL uh, uh, discussions and just to try or maybe better understand what they are, where they are aiming and what can we do about that. And yeah, I would like to thank everybody who participated in those discussions because um, yeah, as usual, we managed to uh, discuss probably more than present, which is something that I really like because uh, I think the biggest benefit of this conference is to discuss and have a lot of people in the same room. All right, so from BPF side, I think we all had a good time geeking out and getting high on coffee. And aside from that, um, we had uh, some interesting topics to talk about. For example, the um, just some high-level picks, uh, the update on current progress on the SCADX work, um, improvements on that side on the struct op infrastructure, um, how LVM uh, or uh, like how LVM and potentially verifier could could uh, potentially interact and. Um, uh, to, to improve the feedback to the user. We talked about uh, compiled BPF with GCC, uh, open questions that are still there, problems that still need to be resolved, and um, uh, things that, um, yeah, how GCC and, and LVM can align. Uh, yeah, Paul gave us an update on the BPF memory model, um, uh, and, and then some of the um, quirks uh, from the ARM uh, V8 and PowerPC and, and lessons learned there and, and how it how it applies to BPF. Um, yeah, lessons then also again from the like looking at the past from the last 10 years of BPF and how BPF will look in, and then for the next 10 years. Uh, so we walked through some of those uh, things and, and features and, and um, new areas that, that we want to explore. Uh, we got an update on the BPF LSM. Um, progress that the, that is currently ongoing for work that needs to be merged and potential future KFunk extensions. Um, we talked about loaders um, and and how uh, for how, how we can facilitate for for example for Android um, uh, opening up the ecosystem around BPF for vendors. Uh, we talked about segmented stacks for BPF, uh, how BPF could have larger stacks uh, than, the, than, than we currently have, verifier improvements in the value tracking, like what, what can be done here to make it simpler, easier to understand uh, for, for people and to improve the maintainability. Static keys and jump tables for BPF. So that is a new ongoing work that uh, where we finally have consensus around API and uh, that we can potentially get this merged in the, in the, within the next year. Um, faster U probes. This was uh, also a very interesting session in terms of how we can speed up URED probes uh, through a new system call, but also early ideas uh, that, that were explored around U-probes itself and some experiments they found like an improvement for of, of 2.x, uh, for example. Um, evolution of stack trace captures with BPF, the current methods, what are their downsides and, and how we can uh, add or uh, overcome them uh, through some new APIs and for, for example to asynchronous scattering of user stacks in particular. Uh, PA hole improvements in the context of, BP, of BTF. Uh, we had discussions around uh, struct ops and uh, uh, BPF QDisk, so um, there are use cases where people want to implement uh, that uh, with, with the help of BPF. Um, NetKit and open coded iterators, so we walked through some of the ongoing work there. And then, yeah, then last but not least, uh, we had the IETF BPF standardization update uh, and the roadmap for the next documents uh, that we want to standardize. And last but not least, the eBPF Foundation. Um, ongoing work there and uh, how it can help the community. All right, so that was the summary.
Yeah, and I, I think as a last step, um, like f for the for the session leads, what what would be useful, like short uh, conclusion in terms of how it went, what what could be done better um, for the next year, and what worked well, and then we can also open it up to you if you if if you have feedback uh, that we can incorporate for the next for the next year's conference. Um, I'll start maybe with BPF. Um, in general, I would say it went very well. We were around 30, 35 people, roughly. Um, some of the people, including the track lead, could not make it. So remote participation uh, in terms of our track was quite useful. Um, some of the sessions had, so there were not that many remote participants, maybe around eight, roughly. But some of the sessions had active uh, engagement from remote. Um, and also, we had like three or four sessions with uh, presentations. I think there were a couple of AV hiccups, but in general, it went quite well. So, yeah. <laughs> I think it went pretty well. Um, I think our experience with the AV is almost the opposite. Not many participation, not many people, and maybe a little bit of a hiccup having to deal with mics. Probably because we're also a, a big room and probably the smallest, so so we need to think about that uh, for for next year. Um, I think we maybe had some issues with mm, presenters not having all the relevant people in the room, so so we probably need to think around how we deal with that next year. Maybe you know organize sessions around which maintainers or which people can be available for half a day or full day rather than organizing by topic, but you know, we can discuss about that. Mm. Anything else? No? Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, I, I think it went really well for FS. Uh, I, I'm very happy from the, the, the attendance that we got. A lot of key developers were able to make it and, and, and discuss um, the relevant issues. Uh, I, I also like the fact that we have the, the remote attendance uh, possibility, although we didn't use it a lot. So, but for some sessions, you know, it's good to have. And you can never know if someone doesn't make it, like last year. Uh, it's important to have it uh, in place. That's my opinion. And also, if, if some session we want to make off the record, we did it, that's also always an option. Um, yeah, doing the schedule, in the end, the schedule was good, in my opinion, but it was challenging to, uh, especially uh, for people that had to be an FS and MM people, uh, to, get, to get the schedule <laughs> arranged properly, but... Uh, Somehow we managed, I think. Yep. As I already said, I think that uh, it was really good. Uh, uh, if I were to mention something that could be better next time, is probably to have a more explicit way to pull people from the breaks into the rooms so that we do not start late. Slots are half an hour, starting five minutes late. It's just quite a lot. Uh, I don't blame people for that because it's really easy to lose a sense of time when you are in very good discussions on the hallway track and that's probably one of the most important track in, the, in this conference. So that, that could be better. In the past we used to have a bell or something just to make people aware that uh, it, it's better than uh, going around and shouting at, at people. Uh, as usual we got the smallest room even though that we are a large group of people, but this time it was offset by having the, the nicest one, so I'm not blaming anybody. Um, we also had a very good uh, remote participation, and uh, I would like to hear uh, opinion of others, but I think that it's really important to have one. I don't think that we have to grow it really large. It's a really nice uh, emergency option for those who cannot make it for whatever reason. But having 20 people plus on the remote track, I don't think it's, it's scaling and it's uh, productive. So uh, 
uh, not only those people on, on the remote side are uh, third class citizens, but uh, also it makes logistic kind of harder, passing microphone around is not the biggest fan. But it's really good to have one. I also am not really sure, and I would like to hear from others whether recording is something that we really need or want. Personally, I don't think that's helping. Some people are not really all that open when the recording is on for reasons that are subjective or reasonable. But uh, having that option for people to participate in real time is really important. Yeah, and I guess that that's at least something from top of my head, maybe we can find more based on what people think. The, uh, the recording might actually be useful for the LWN people. So if, when, if, when they do a write-up, it's pretty easy if it's recorded for them. Yeah. So what you're saying is do the recording, just not put it on, on YouTube. Yeah, sounds like a good compromise to me. Somebody else to give any feedback or any ideas, thoughts? We used to have microphones you could throw at people. They were soft and, I mean, I know they were awkward to hold. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they, exactly. I mean, I know they were awkward to hold and they didn't actually have the best sound quality, but you could still throw them. Um, the other thing I liked about this conference compared to last year, um, the fact that we're co-located, the, the, the hotel is co-located with the conference, it allowed more spontaneous meetups that, that, that were a little harder to arrange last time. So I really liked that. Um, um, otherwise, yeah, it was great. Okay, so I have one more thing that uh, that could be better, uh, but uh, it couldn't because of funding, I guess. Uh, having a only one uh, evening event is not enough, because uh, the day is usually heavily packed, and uh, if we do not have anything in the evening, then people just spread around, and you just lose a lot of opportunity to talk to people outside of your track. So, uh, so I think that this is something that could be improved. It was purely a financial thing, yeah. So, so I like... The message is talk to your companies to bring a sponsorship to LSF. That would be the best way to secure more evenings. So I like the uh, recordings to refer, refer back to them like a year later to see how I did or how we did or, or how things stand from where we were. It really helps out to rewatch before this event. Uh, the other thing is to give Willie an advanced copy of the schedule so that we all know when we're going to talk, if, if we could do that. Uh, Amir already anointed me to the, uh, the scheduling discussion for next year, so that's, that, that's going to be fine. Um, as, as far as it, it is, I've, I've been to uh, less well-funded conferences than this one, and there's still an official event, it's just that there's no open bar. I mean, I think pretty much everyone in this room is well paid enough. We don't need to have a company buy our drinks for us. It doesn't cost that much to go to a bar and say, hey, we'd like your room and we're going to bring 200 people to it and they are drink like fish. Like you don't, that's not a hard sale to a, to a, bar, to a bar. So the problem we observe with that is that a lot of people just take that as an opportunity to go elsewhere. I mean, it's it's a free alcohol is definitely a draw to a lot of people in this room, so it's, it acts as a, an attractor. And the question is how much of an attractor we need to get everybody into these events. It's possible we could do something hybrid, but it's it's definitely true that free alcohol draws you all in. Perhaps if we just canned all the food and just you drank like fishes. <laughs> James, are you seriously trying to tell me that we are less social than the BSD people? <laughs> well, what I'm describing took place at BSD can, so. 
so uh, more power in the rooms for people who are trying to plug in their laptops. <laughs> Uh, that would be helpful. Uh, another simple thing which we used to have up until 2019 was we had uh, an LSF mailing list. So Martin said that we can't do that for GDRP reasons. I'm not exactly sure. What yeah, we, we would have to make it so that you would, I mean, I, we talked about it maybe last year. We would have to have it so that all the other stuff you agree to when you register for the conference, you would have to agree to being on a list that blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I think it's worthwhile because trying to communicate, uh, not, well, because uh, trying to communicate with other people while you're at the conference can be difficult. Not everybody, you know, has uh, some people share contact, uh, personal contact information and having, the other thing is that, you know, we get technical discussions on those. You can go now today and look at the archives, going back to, you know, 2014 and there's, there's good information on there. Uh, that would so those are my 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 two suggestions say, the list thing is actually slightly wrong we do the same thing for plumbers you you uh, opt into our communications you automatically get added to the list and we we have to agree you have we will agree if you ask us to take you off again which is our uh, GDR requirement so it's it's definitely not impossible to run a list because we do yeah. The, yeah, the, the, so the, it used to work by me, you know, scraping the list and putting everybody on the LSF list, you know, by pasting it, right? So we, we just need to work with the Linux Foundation to, you know, automate this. Also, uh, I talked to Constantin and he was about to move the list and I said, can you please hold off because uh, also LSF PC, I'm transitioning the, them to the new subspace or whatever it's called. I said, please hold off until we're done with the conference so that we don't have, you know, communication problems right before uh, the event is taking place. So we'll try and fix that up for next year. All right, cool. Um, I guess that was it. Uh, I had one other thing, I can't remember what it was now, but oh, in terms of the, I do agree that, you know, the alcohol is less important than the opportunity to meet together, you know, off tracks. So I don't need somebody to buy my dinner or buy my drinks, but it, uh, everybody breaks up and goes in a hundred different directions and trying to have a place to meet in common for dinner would be, I would agree with that would be good too. Uh, one other thing about the recordings, if we're not going to record all of the sessions, it would be great to have an indication of that occurring. Like there, I think there was only one speaker in our track that said, by the way, this isn't going to be recorded. I don't know if any of the others weren't. I mean, yeah, like, uh, in retrospect, if you need something which should not be published, please tell the session leads and then we won't publish it on the, on, on YouTube. So just, yeah. All right. Uh, if you have any other suggestions, please feel free to email us to the list after the conference, and yeah, with that, I would like to thank everybody for participating, and have safe travels back home, and see you next year.